Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm Brian. Today I stopped by the Thomasville Airport in Georgia to show you the Power of the Past Museum. Coming up right now. Just a quick pan around overview of what's inside here of this museum. Uh, again, this museum is directly across uh, the parking lot from the FBO here. And as you can see, they have just a good selection and variety of, of aircraft engines from, from many, many years ago. So if you're passing through Georgia, I want to check out the Thomasville Airport. They have a beautiful, absolutely beautiful airport runway many tea hangers and then you can check out this museum where they've got all these engines and then the next hangar over there's a couple very old biplanes 30, 1920s and 1930s construction uh, airplanes which we'll check out in just a minute so I'll just kind of walk through here quickly and show you what they've got I uh, was hoping to meet up with the museum, I guess you call curator, James. James, I apologize right now that I, I wasn't able to meet with you today. I ran a little long on another uh, interview in Moultrie. So here's our rotorway RW100. It's a horsepower donated by, donated by Andy Moore. Just love looking at these old engines, whether it's aircraft engines, automotive, motorcycle engines, industrial engines, it's really interesting to see how we used to do things back in the day. Here's a, a Salmson 9AD, 40 horsepower, made in France from, looks like 1926, a radial engine. Several Several radial engines here. This is a Lawrence L64, 45 horsepower. A Warner Super Scare of 145 horsepower from 1932. Yeah, it just amazes me the stuff that we've been building for all for all this time and with you know no, no CNC technology and that kind of stuff, right? Here's a Warner Scarab Jr. 90 horsepower from 1929. So many radials. Valley M5 built in 1928. This is that. This is how can I pronounce that one? Zekeli? Zekeli. SR30, 1931. Here's a Continental, finally a familiar one. Continental APU, 30 horsepower, uh, I guess, APU engine. An Aronka E113, 36 horsepower. Made in 1931. And that looks like more of like one of those industrial engines. And I don't see a nameplate on that one. Wright Cyclone R1820, 1525 horsepower. That's a really big one there. Then we got a Continental A40, A50. An A65 from 1931, 38, and 39 on this engine stand here. And it looks like a Ford B air cooled conversion from Dayton, Aero Ford, 1932, 50 horsepower. There we go. Some more experimentals here. As a Ford conversion, this is a Volkswagen. 
Here's a Volkswagen conversion. And then here is a Franklin 4AC 150A, 55 horsepower from 1938. Franklins are really cool, have a lot of interesting history to them. Here's a Heath Henderson B4, 30 horsepower, 1929. Looks like, looks kind of like a Rotax engine. And here, which actually I just got done visiting the mall factory, here's a Franklin that was donated by BD Mall in memory of BD Mall. Check that out. So it's a Franklin 4AC 150A, 60 horsepower from 1939. If you are finding value in this video, hit the like button and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Aero Adventure, Wingbug, Grip Block Ties, Edge Performance, and new this month, Kit Plane Parts. And right now, Grip Lock Ties has a promo for USA customers to get free shipping. Just use the code EXPERIMENTAL. Find all of these links in the description below. Let's jump back in. McCulloch TC6150 drone engine. I've heard a lot about the drone engines. Donated by Bobby and Betty Rogers. Horsepower is 120. Built in 1955. We got a Curtis R600 Challenger radial, an Anzini 120 horsepower made in France, 1918. And we've got a Lycoming Geo 435, 240 horsepower, 1941. It's a long shaft drive on that one. Franklin O335 3D helicopter. So this is laying on its side. Obviously, normally would be found vertically mounted for a helicopter mount. It is an Offenhauser race car, 110 cubic inch. Uh, another Franklin, 65 horsepower from 1941. Cirrus Mark III, 90 horsepower, made in England, 1926. We got a Ford A peat and pole conversion, 40 horsepower, 1929. Looks to be a really heavy engine there, isn't it? A Tiger Zaldi, 150 horsepower from Spain. A Curtis Ox 5, Miller Eyes, 90 horsepower from 1917. We all know what the Ox 5 went in, right? That went into the Jenny. One of the first mail carrying aircraft back in the day. There's a Franklin Geo 425. Wow, I didn't know they made Franklin so big. 300 horsepower in 1953. In memory of Chester Bellamy. I guess he donated that. This is a monster of an engine 300 horsepower 425 look at the cylinders on that thing and then here's a ranger 6-44c2 175 horsepower that's the very rear engine that's from 1941 and then i have Wow, I've never ever seen something like this before. This is... So, apparently Franklin made a 12-cylinder 0805-2, 450 horsepower. To find out what in the world this went to, that is just a massive, massive engine there. 12-cylinder engine. 
That would not fit on a light sport, would it? All right, got a Lawrence APU, Lawrence APU 145. No, 14.5, excuse me. 14.5 horsepower. Not exactly sure what that would power, 14 and a half horsepower. And then you got all these really massive radial engines over here. Here's a Pratt & Whitney R2000 Twin Wasp. Heard a lot about the Twin Wasp engines, as you probably have in history. 1,450 horsepower. A Guberson A1020 diesel. 310 horsepower diesel radial. It's a Taylor. A Taylor engine, 160 horsepower from 1919. It's like uh, the bottom end of a Roberts 4X 40 horsepower from 1910. A lot of cast parts in there. Here's a Wright R1300 Cyclone. 825 horsepower. Another Wright R2600 Cyclone. 1800 horsepower. That's a big jump. 825. 1800 horsepower. Look how those cylinders are staggered. Dumont drone engine, 60 horsepower. Lycoming uh, R680, 225 horsepower from 1929. Continental R9, 975 46. 975 46, 525 horsepower. A Jacobs real workhorse engine, memory of Louis Rutan. Continental R670 9, 250 horsepower, 200, uh, or 1935 technology there. There's a Martin 333, 120 horsepower inverted. Like the cylinders are on the bottom of that one. And then an Alvis Leonad Leonadis. 415 horsepower made in 1939, made in England. So there's a just quick overview of what's available here at this engine museum in Thomasville, Georgia. So if you're passing through, again, stop in, check it out. And I've got one more little hanger across the way here. Fortunately, I made it late, over here, late in the day here, so it's already dark outside, so the hangar is dimly lit with the lights, but we've got a Waco RNF 1931 with 145 horsepower engine and a Travel Air 2000, 1928 with 220 horsepower engine. And then a few more radials and a Franklin right there. Thomasville also has a yearly fly-in, uh, I believe it's in the fall. I have to look up the dates, but uh, it's a, it's a fly-in and kind of camp out, camp under the wing. It's been going on for, I don't know how many years now, but I would say several decades. Everybody should know about that by now, but it's Thomasville, Georgia fly-in. happens yearly. Um, I've personally camped here. They actually have camping facilities, meaning showers on site and usually food available. So if you haven't been to the Thomasville airport, it's, uh, it's a good stop off and um, a good place to visit during their, their fly-in. It's like they have another couple projects that have come in. Okay, so that's just a, kind of a quick stop off here in Thomasville. Just wanted to drop in here and capture this for you all if you haven't been here before and uh, show you what's here. So not the typical video, but I just figured it was worth sharing with you guys. We'll see you in the next video.